Hey, welcome to The Beer Show, starring me, John. This show's basically about me trying to uh, introduce new types of beers to people that may not drink stuff other than maybe Miller Lite or Bud Light, or people that tell me, you know what, I just don't like beer, because there's thousands of different beers out there, and I'm sure there's bound to be one that almost everyone would like. So I thought I'd go through, uh, in this show, a bunch of different ones, microbrews, macrobrews, craft beers, whatever you want to, you know, call any of them and give a little insight into them and talk about them just a little bit and see what people think. So for the first time, for the first one, I decided to do one of my all-time favorite beers, Guinness. In America today, we have four different Guinness brews. Three stouts and one lager. The most common that you see in bars and everywhere else is the Guinness Draft, which is still a stout. Then you have the Guinness Extra Stout, the Guinness Foreign Extra Stout, and now, after introduced in 2010, I believe March, was the Guinness Black Lager. All four of these beers contain the basic same ingredients. They contain water, barley, hops, brewer's yeast. But what makes Guinness unique across the board and for their flavor and color is that they roast part of the barley that goes into the, into the brew. And also, despite what everyone tells you about drinking Guinness being like drinking at dinner or it fills them up, even this Guinness stout here per pint only has 198 calories. That's less than a pint of skim milk, and it's less than some of the light beers on the market, even. Now, the main difference between these two and this stout is they have a little bit more of an acidic taste to them, mainly because those two are, are carbonated with carbon dioxide gas, where the draft here has a mix of carbon dioxide and nitrogen. So, like I said earlier, all the beers pretty much have the same content in it, but the Guinness Draft has a mix of combination, a combination of carbon dioxide and nitrogen. This allows the beer to be under extreme pressure in these cans or in bottles without being over carbonated and giving you that extra like acidic bite to it. Nitrogen also forms smaller bubbles, so when the can is open and poured into a glass, it gives it a very smooth, creamy looking head and a nice, smooth color and flavor. I believe this one is a better one. I believe it's smoother and it's, I, I drink it a lot. It's the one I like the most. They also to keep it tasting fresh and to keep it fresh when you pour it to simulate being poured out of a tap. There's a widget in these cans and in the bottle form also, which is something that no beer company that I think did until Guinness did it. Uh, the draft is also supposed to be, supposed to be served, served colder than the regular stouts. Some pubs actually serve it at what's called extra cold at 38.3 degrees Fahrenheit, but standard you, sh you should serve it around 42.8. You know, the rumor is that in Europe and England, people drink their beer warm. They don't, because 40, even at 42.8 degrees, eh, it's pretty cold. So the draft, again, is pretty low in calories like the stout and carbs, but it has a heavy rep still. People think it's very filling. The draft beer has 125, 125 calories per liter, 9.9 .9 grams of carbs, and 3, 0.3 grams of protein. I'm sorry, it was per 12 ounces which 125 calories at 12 ounces really isn't bad. It's less than a can of Coke, a can of Mountain Dew. It's less than most beers on the market, even. Because of that, it also seems to be the most popular of the four in America. Now, another thing with Guinness is they have a very specific way of pouring their beer. They have a very specific, more specifically, the draft. They call it the double pour. The total pour on a double pour takes about two minutes. It's like 119 seconds, but whatever. And they say it should be served in a tulip-shaped glass, and some of you may have seen the Guinness pint glasses when you've gone out before. And on the way to the tap, the beer passes through a chiller and is forced through a five-hole disc-shaped restrictor plate. This restrictor plate increases the pressure and the friction created by the beer going through it, which creates the small bubbles that form the head. After it's about half full, the glass is allowed to sit, and it's allowed to rest until the head settles. Then it is poured the rest of the way until a slight dome is formed right over the glass. And what's really neat is if you have a good bartender or a good bartender at a pub, wherever, when they have the slight dome on top, some of them can use some of the leftover foam that's dripping out of the tap and put a clover on top or other other designs. 
which is really neat to me. Now, the foreign extra style and the extra style are basically really, really kind of the same. The difference comes into the fact that with the foreign extra stout, they take what's called the wart of the beer after they brew it, which is kind of like an extract, and they ship it to wherever this one's going to be brewed, and then that is con that, st that wart is added to local ingredients from the destination, so it gives, there's different alcohol content per, you know, different locations. The flavor's a little different, but it's basically this beer only localized it. The U.S. version of this actually is 7.5% alcohol by volume, which is pretty hefty for a beer, where this one's only about 4.5 or 5. So that's, that's primarily the difference between these two. And they're both carbonated with, um, usually when you get them, it's both carbon dioxide. They're very, very similar. Now, the Guinness Black Lager is a new beer. Like I said, it was introduced in 2010. And it was introduced in basically to um, get new, drink, new beer drinkers to Guinness. Because there are people that don't like stout beers, and there are people that like lagers. So, it's the same basic ingredients, roasted barley, but the main difference is it's brewed as a lager, which means that the yeast is bottom fermenting, where a stout is top fermenting. So the flavor's different, and the body's different of it. Like I said, the target audience is uh, different than most. It's primarily young male drinkers is who they're targeting. They like beer a little colder than stouts, and they like them served, you know, maybe in the lower 40s, where a normal stout, like I said before, was low to mid 40s. So that's that's the new black lager. It's limited, it's only in certain markets. I, I'd say give it a shot. So those are the four basic Guinness brews available in America. Most of them are available other places also, but uh, some of the times the names are different. The extra foreign stout has a different name. The draft is usually called the draft still though. And most pl some places don't even have the black lager. Guinness as a company has been around for 252 years now. Guinness is not seem to be going anywhere anytime soon. They're one of the most exported beers in the world, they're one of the most drank beers in the world, and they're one of the largest beer manufacturers in the world still to this day. And they have a huge following in many, many places. There's a lot more history to the company Guinness and behind this beer than I mentioned here, mainly because I don't, I'm not doing an hour long show. I'm just doing, you know, a little 10 minute, 15 minute blurb. But I hope I was did enough to get you interested in finding out more about it and maybe giving some of the different flavors a shot and seeing if you like them. You know, I don't know if they're going to make their 9,000, make it to the end of the 9,000 year lease. I really don't. It'd be kind of neat if they did. But uh, they have a good start. And hopefully next time you're at the bar or your local pub, you'll give a nice glass of Guinness a shot. Thank you and I hope you join us again.